Hey everyone, David here, and welcome back to another Sheets Finance walkthrough. In this video, we're going to create this total returns analysis spreadsheet, and a link to the final template is available in this video's description. The total return for a stock is a holistic perspective on your investment because it takes into account both the capital gain or loss of that stock, as well as dividends paid out over that period. As always, the sheets are entirely dynamic, so you can update the stock symbol and the sheet will reload with new data. Great, let's jump right into it. Okay, let's jump into it. So just before we start writing formulas, I'll point out here on the right hand side that this is the equation that we're using for a total stock return. It's a combination of the change in capital, that's the P1 minus P0, plus any dividends or distributions over the period, then divided by that original price to get a percentage total return over the period. And we'll calculate it on a daily basis. Over here on the left hand side, all I've got so far is I've written in Apple as my stock code. I'm pulling in the name of the company using uh, Sheets Finance company info function, and I've set a start and end date one year apart. Cool. So first we need a reference point for the total returns or the time at which we first purchased our investment. So this is a point in time price. So I'm going to use SF, the Sheets Finance function. I'm going to reference the stock code. I'm then going to type in historical because that is the function that we need. I'm going to use the close price of that day, um, not the high or the low uh, or the open price. And then I'm going to enter the date that I'm after, which is this start date and close bracket. And that will pull in the close price for Apple on the 6th of December, 2022. Now I need two more main pieces of data to work with. I need a historical time series over that year. So I need the price of Apple for the last year. Um, and I also need the dividends paid over the period. So let's start with the price and that'll be using the SF time series function. And you can read about all our functions in our documentation on our website, sheetsfinance.com. I have to reference the stock. I then need a start date, which is up here, an end date. The period is a daily time series as opposed to an intraday time series. And then the metrics that I'm after, I just want the date and the close price of each day. And as a last argument, I'm going to put this minus or negative sign in to reverse the order so that we get a descending order time series so that when we chart it, it's going to be moving in the correct direction. I'll click enter and that'll be Apple's close price over the last year. Cool, now over here in cell F6, because I'm going to leave a little bit of space for our calculations, I'm going to pull up the dividends over the last year. So that is using the SF dividend function. I then again reference the stock code. I then have to enter the start date, which is here, the end date, which is here. Uh, the metrics that I'm after is date, dividend, and payment date. Um, and I'll also put it in descending order just so it matches the direction of our time series for uh, clearer understanding. Click enter and that should arrive in a moment. There you go. So those are the dividends that have fallen within this time period or over the last uh, year. Great, let's do just a tiny bit of formatting to make it look a little bit nicer. Maybe we'll make these ones a bit bigger. And now we're in business. So I'm going to calculate two things. I'm going to calculate the total return. That's going to go here. And I'm also going to calculate just the capital return um, just to compare uh, the change in price or the capital uh, gain or loss of the stock against the total return. So we can see the impact that um, dividends or distributions have on your investment in total. So we'll, oops, I've done that the wrong way around. So the capital return is, is easy. We'll get to that in a sec. Let's do the total return formula and we're going to do it all in one cell. Uh, and I'm going to try my best here to explain the method. Um, so I'll go equals. I'm going to open two brackets. Now what we want to do is we want to sum the total return. We want to sum the difference in price of that day, which is here in uh, column B, 
as well as any distributions that have occurred prior to this date. So it's a conditional sum. We're gonna use sum if in Google Sheets to do it. We wanna sum those together and then we wanna um, take that as a percentage over our original starting price so that we get a change, a daily change, plus any dividends that have been paid over that time. So the way we're gonna do that is there's a double bracket and sum if, and we're gonna sum if, and we're gonna use the payment date because that's the, the date that we've received the actual distribution. So I'm gonna highlight that. I'm gonna make sure I click F4 here so I get those dollar signs so that those cells are addressed absolutely. And so when I start to drag down the formula, it's not going to also move down at the same time in cell, in row, sorry, column H. Then my criteria is less than, I'll use and to concatenate the strings, and it's gonna be less than this date over here. So basically that's saying sum these dividends, but only sum the ones where the payment date and I'm gonna use F4 again here to make sure that that doesn't move. Only sum the dividends that have a payment date that is less than the day on which we're calculating the total returns. So that's that. I close the bracket on this. I then need to plus uh, the current price, close that bracket, divide the whole thing by the price at the start. And again, using F4 to make sure that we always address this cell close bracket on that and then minus one to turn this into a percentage and I'll click enter and I'll let that auto fill and I'll quickly roll down bear with me and we'll turn all of this into a percentage great so that's the total return and that makes sense that this should be zero of course on day one with reference to this, the price hasn't changed at all. It's, it's that price and there haven't been any distributions. So therefore your total return is 0%. Day two, there haven't been any distributions yet, but the price has reduced slightly. So there's been a capital loss. So we're down 1.38%. To compare this to just the standard capital return, uh, that's of course quite straightforward. We're gonna do equals. We're gonna take today's price. We're gonna divide it by that starting price, again, using F4, so it's always addressed, and minus one. And now we're just getting the percentage change of each day's price from that original reference. I'll scroll down, and you'll see why we're doing this in a moment. Okay. And that's it, that's calculating the total return for Apple. Let's just do a sanity check and make sure that everything flows in when we update the stock. Great, now that is total returns for Verizon. So last, things, uh, last thing to do is to now chart our total returns. So I'll change back to Apple and I'll take all of our data here and highlight it all. And I'm gonna insert a chart. It's decided to give us a column chart. So we're gonna change that to line we're gonna set the X axis to the date. We're gonna remove it as a series. We're gonna remove the clothes, close as a series. And that's pretty much it. So that is our total return chart for Apple. And you'll see that the capital return is almost identical to our total return because Apple doesn't pay uh, a very high dividend. It's a, it's a much lower yield stock. So there isn't that much of an impact of dividends over the period. But if we were to then change this to another stock that has a much higher yield like Verizon and click enter, you'll see that over the year, there is a much larger impact of dividends being paid out as a percentage of the total stock price. So were you to not have received dividends and just been looking at price change, you would have ended this period at 4% up, whereas including the dividends you're being paid out, you're ending this period in the 11, uh, around 11 and a half percent. That's it for total returns. Uh, like I said, a link to this template is in the description and please leave any comments or reach out at any time. Thanks for watching.